Hi, this is how CloudFormation works introductory tutorial part one, EC2 instance. In this video, I'm gonna give a very basic introduction to CloudFormation. Okay, so here's a summary of what we're gonna cover. First, I'm gonna provide you guys with an introduction of CloudFormation. Second, I'm gonna give, uh, we're gonna go download a sample template with a single EC2 instance. We're gonna use that download template to then launch a CloudFormation stack. Then we're gonna SSH into that instance that was launched uh, by CloudFormation to verify that everything's working. Uh, then we're gonna delete the stack at the end and I'll give you a summary of everything at the very end and I'll have some questions for you. All right, so let's jump right into it. This video is based on this blog post entitled, uh, A Simple Introduction to AWS CloudFormation Part 1 EC2. And this blog post is gonna be useful because it contains all the commands that you can copy and paste and uh, run these examples for yourself. I will post uh, a link to this blog in the description below as well as a link to these, these slides here. Okay, so what is CloudFormation? I'm going to do the stereotypical thing and go ahead and read to you the official documentation. AWS CloudFormation gives developers and systems administrators an easy way to create and manage a collection of related AWS resources, provisioning, and updating them in an orderly and predictable fashion. So that's a bunch of words. And below that first paragraph of words, there's a longer paragraph of even more words. And then uh, finally, there's a third paragraph of words. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna summarize to you guys what CloudFormation is in my own words. Um, and how I like to describe CloudFormation to people is it's this incredible tool that AWS has provided us that uh, basically you tell AWS CloudFormation what you want, you press a button, and then it all magically gets created. That's basically what CloudFormation is. It's a pretty powerful tool. If you're working with AWS a lot, I highly recommend you looking into it and learning it because in the long run, it's gonna save you a ton of time. All right, so let's go ahead and go download that uh, AWS CloudFormation template. I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm gonna get that. So here is the AWS CloudFormation uh, documentation. If you kind of scroll down to the bottom here under um, sample templates, there is a, uh, one under uh, I'm gonna go US East here and services and click on that. And then there's a, a Amazon EC2. If you click on that, you see uh, a template name, Amazon EC2 instance in a security group. So this is basically uh, exactly what we need. So this is what we're gonna use. Um, this example is a little bit uh, contrite because uh, in, 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 the, in reality, in real life for practical use cases, you, you probably won't be using such a powerful tool just to spin up only one instance. Though I, I guess some people do that, but AWS CloudFormation is such a powerful tool that you could use it for so much more. So this, uh, it's a pretty contrite example, but I think that this example serves a very good uh, introduction to CloudFormation because then we can focus on what CloudFormation is actually doing versus what it's provisioning. Uh, so let's go ahead and start now. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this template and I'm gonna go W git, grab the template there, rename it to single instance JSON because it uh, is downloaded as JSON format. Then I'm gonna use this handy one liner that I have, uh, JSON to Yama, that will convert uh, this JSON file into Yama file. So this brings up a point. CloudFormation supports both um, both JSON format as well as YAML format. Uh, I prefer generally the YAML format because I believe it's a easier to read, it's more human readable. Uh, the JSON format works just fine too if you want to uh, go blind. Um, no, the JSON format works fine too uh, and, and both of them work. So it's really up to you which one you want to use. I'm going to use uh, YAML for this uh, video. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this uh, template. So one good way to understand uh, the structure of CloudFormation template is actually to um, look at the top level um, top level sections of the template. Oops, uh, so I'm gonna use a tool called JQ to do this. Uh, I'm catting the single dash instance.json file, the CloudFormation JSON template into the JQ, JQ tool here in the, into the keys method. And then there it spits out basically the top level sections. So these are all the top level keys that are in this template. Um, out of all these top level keys, the only one that's actually required is the resources key. Every single other key is actually optional. Uh, but uh, the ones that we're gonna cover in this video, the ones that really make sense to first introduce to you guys is parameters and resources. So uh, let's go take a look at parameters by looking at one of these templates now. 
So I, again, I'm going to use the Yama format uh, template. Uh, and go ahead and kill this guy. Okay. So uh, in this template, uh, look at the parameters here. There's a key name parameter. There is an instance type parameter. And I'm going to scroll down here. And there's a SSS, SSH location parameter. And one of the things that is worth pointing out is looking uh, at the default attribute here. So SSH location has the default attribute as well as instance type. Instance type also has a default attribute, but key name does not have a default attribute. So the reason I'm pointing this out is because when there is a default attribute, that means that parameter is optional. Uh, when there is uh, no default attribute, that means that parameter is required. So you must provide that parameter when you launch the CloudFormation stack uh, in order for that CloudFormation stack to work or else it won't work. So um, make sure you do that. Uh, so what are parameters? Okay, those are the parameters that are available in the template. Parameters are basically inputs you provide to CloudFormation when you launch the stack. So these input parameters are basically options, options that change the behaviors of, of what the changes the behavior of what the stack does. So uh, parameters are basically that's what they do. And in this CloudFormation template, uh, the author of this template here gave a very nice description. Thank you very much. That says name of existing EC2 key pair to enable SSH access to the instance. So that's very important because we're going to need to SSH an instance later in this video. Uh, so we're going to have to provide a key name, uh, key name parameter in order to SSH an instance. So we're going to do that. All right. So let's go back to this post here and go ahead and grab that. That. Uh, oh, let's also cover resources, right? We cover parameters, but resources. What are resources? Let's scroll to the very bottom here. Resources are right here, and there are two resources in this confirmation template. One is an EC2 security group, and one is an EC2 instance. So this is this is the bread and butter of the CloudFormation template. This tells CloudFormation what to spin up, what to create for you. And this template is telling uh, CloudFormation, I want an EC2 instance, I want a security group, and I want the security group to uh, basically be associated with this EC2 instance. So that's how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and start this. Uh, uh, CloudFormation stack. So let's go launch the stack. I'm just going to grab this command right here and paste it right here and run it. And let's, we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So in this example, I moved things around a little bit. So I'm going to have to fix this because I've downloaded the template at the root level. There we go. So we click on that and now it's successfully launched the stack. So we can confirm that the stack has successfully launched it by going to the AWS console. So let's go to AWS console. I'll click here to show you where it is. And it's now under management tools, CloudFormation. You click on that and you see I have a bunch of other stacks in there. But here's the main stack, the one that we just launched, a single instance. And let's go up here and click on events. So when you, uh, uh, it's very useful to highlight, uh, highlight the line item there and then click on the events tab because then you can see exactly what CloudFormation is doing. So see, here's a, it launched the stack at 9.01.07, and then it is creating the security group, and then it's going to create the instance. And it was smart enough to know to create the security group before the instance. It, did, it determined the dependency for you, basically. Um, so now we refresh again, and look how fast it was. It was it's also done now creating everything. So it started at uh, 07 and it ended up at, at 50. So basically, it created everything in under a minute. It's a very, very fast tool. OK. So next step is to SSH into instance and make sure that everything is working. So let me just go find the instance now because it should have launched the instance. And here is the instance right here. It's still initializing. So we'll see whether or not uh, it's going to be ready by the time uh, I SSH into it. Yeah, and it's ready. So this instance has been up only for one minute, and there you have it. We've uh, successfully verified that the CloudFormation stack has launched the instance, and we have uh, SSH into it. Um, one thing I, I should have noted is when I ran this command earlier, I provided a parameter value of a tutorial key pair. And rem remember, it's very important that you provide this required parameter because it had no default. So the tutorial key pair is a key pair that I created earlier. Uh, and it's under here. I'm just going to show you the key pair just so you know that you you, you should create this. Uh, you want to create this or else uh, it's not going to work. Okay, so um, now let's go ahead and delete everything. So we'll go down here 
and just go ahead and grab the delete command right here. Oops, I have to exit out of the machine and now we'll delete the stack and that's it. So let's go verify that it's being deleted by CloudFormation. So you click on services here, you go to CloudFormation again and now delete in progress. So CloudFormation is gonna know now how to delete every single resource you, you spun up. So you're not gonna have any leftover resources here. It's, it's pretty nice. It cleans up it nice and tidy. All right, so here's a, a summary again of what we've done. I gave you an introduction to what CloudFormation is. We went and downloaded the, a sample template with a single instance. We used that do uh, download template to launch a CloudFormation stack. We SSH into the instance and then we delete the stack. Uh, and summary. So here are some questions, like I said, at the very end. Um, these are questions that uh, hopefully you should be able to answer. What is CloudFormation? Try to describe CloudFormation in your own terms. Uh, another question is, what formats does CloudFormation support? There are two. Uh, what are the important two top level sections covered in the CloudFormation template that we cover specifically in this video? And where can you go to download sample templates? That's a very good resource uh, for you right there. Here are all the links to um, the blog articles that is actually a series of introductory to CloudFormation here for you. Uh, these slides are gonna be uh, uh, added to the description of this video below. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you like this type of content, uh, be sure to like it, encourage more content like this. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or any visual video suggestions, feel free to comment below. And if you need any DevOps support or help, check out Bolt Ops. Subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks, guys.